Time to run down the feast and food culture in South Korea and discover some of the customs that'll make us appreciate it even more. If to see is to believe, then to taste is to experience. Hansik or South Korean food is the cultural commodity that's really getting a fair share of airtime. Whether or not you're aware of it, Hansik is a powerful subject for product placement. In films, it's become a clever way to get your craving for an authentic Korean experience. So, to get abreast with some of the best dishes out there, it's time for a quick rundown of Korea's favorite feasts. One of the simplest, most satisfying culinary treats is the Korean barbecue. Cooked on tabletop iron griddles, fresh slices of meat are served up for you to grill at your leisure. Choose from brisket slices called chadobeji to thick succulent strips of bacon or samgyeopsal. The essential component is a generous helping of lettuce and a host of side dishes that make every bite a gift for your palate. Korean barbecue is certainly one of those easy meals that are great for creating a casual dining experience. Anju. Although Anju refers to food best served with alcohol, it is also the practice of pairing that offers us some insight into Korea's love for drinking. Top of the list is soju. Soju is a clear distilled liquor made with rice, wheat, or barley, whose watery neutral taste, some would say, is close to refined vodka. Korean barbecue pubs are well stocked with this. Then there's magoli, the rice farmer's drink. Lucky for them, as this milky traditional Korean spirit is growing in popularity, with more and more visitors discovering its merits. Made with fermented rice or wheat, it's served in deep bowls and purportedly is best eaten with Korean savory pancake on rainy days. Don't ask us why, it just is. And then there's mekju, or simply local beer. It is discouraged to mix soju or even magoli when enjoying your local Korean beer. Mild and fizzy compared to its foreign counterparts, if you're looking for something closer to a refreshment than an alcoholic beverage, then this may be the drink for you. Bibimba. Straightforward but gratifying, this signature Korean dish is the favorite of many. Served with slices of meat, fried egg, and a hefty pile of vegetables over steaming rice. It's the type of no-frills meal that makes Korean dining so easy to love. Adding liberal dollops of gochujang, a salty chili pepper paste, the only thing left to do is mix and enjoy. Kimchi. Here's the bit you probably already know. Ubiquitous to any dining experience in Korea. Kimchi is a traditional fermented Korean side dish that's made with choices of vegetables, preserved in pungent spicy seasoning. As most households in Korea make their own, almost everyone here is a kimchi expert in their own right. Proud of their food, a conversation on kimchi may reveal some surprising facts about South Koreans. When you make a kimchi, you need pure Korean chili powder and fermented fish or fermented shrimps. Yeah. yeah, you just pour the chili powder first and uh, mix uh, this fermented uh, shrimp or fish together. You add some vegetables uh, such as green onion or a little bit of moo. It's kind of a Korean radish. 
This one is sesame oil. When you make fresh vegetable side dish, uh, you must need this one. Uh, when you make uh, Korean uh, spinach side dish or when you make uh, bean sprout, you wow. must need this sesame oil. smell it from here. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's very yeah. fragrant. But what about these chilies? These are dried chilies. Yeah, dried chili. Is there a difference in taste between this and this and those? Yeah, recently many Southeast Asians already live in Korea. There are many people who need this foreign chili. Or the, this kind of this uh, chili, this is the traditional one. And this is spicy, really yeah, spicy. spicy. It, this is the one that gets powdered. Yeah, into right. This. Yeah. It came from Gangwondo province. And the Gangwondo province is the coldest province in Korea. And they plant lots of Chinese cabbage. So there are over 200 kinds of kimchi in Korea. But uh, most Korea's food. most favorite ones are two. Uh, first one, uh, cabbage kimchi. The second one, uh, white radish kimchi. So when you make radish kimchi or cabbage kimchi, you must need this kind of uh, chili. Right. Thanks. Thanks so much. Are all chilies the same? No. The quality uh, is uh, quite different. Uh, it depends on the province that they planted. They it have. depends on the weather. Not everyone is the same. In 19th century, hot chili came to Korea. After uh, we just imported hot chili, Koreans uh, really started to love it. As you know, Korea has kind of a hot temper, uh, so they love hot and spicy food. It's their originality, I think. There are probably as many types of kimchi as there are vegetables available in Korea. Considered as the national dish, it was surprisingly not originally spicy, but with only being introduced at the turn of the 20th century, Koreans went crazy for chili spice, and today have provinces dedicated purely to their cultivation. Now it's time to hit the streets. The Pajang Macha or Korean food stall can be an oddity or an adventure. Here's our hand picked favorites Tokboki, made with sticky rice cakes drenched in spicy red pepper paste. It's a type of dish that has transcended the street, as you can now find them in restaurants as well. Odong and fried snacks. If there's chokboki served in the stall, then there's probably a host of fried snacks and odong or boiled fish cakes lurking about beside it. Whipped in batter or simply stewed in broth, it's an inexpensive treat you can find almost anywhere, even in affluent districts like Myeongdong. Gimbap. Currently Korea's favorite fast food, it's unmistakably much like a sushi roll, but doesn't share the same strict reverence as its Japanese counterpart. Instead, it's a hearty everyman's meal that's filled with anything and everything, from tuna to spam to spicy octopus. Hi. The Chipsy Donut. Consider it the street donut. The Chipsy is representative of Korean street food. A simple fried rice cake rolled in sugar and filled with red bean and cinnamon powder. If you haven't considered trying it, it's time you did. Degona. The closest we have to describing this irresistible confection is a honeycomb tofu disc. Made hot and fresh in seconds, the sugary treat is a quick energy boost during long walks around Seoul. Last but not the least, the Crazy Pipe Ice Cream. A fairly recent addition to the host of street food offerings, this Beat the Heat dessert is often made with semi-sweet crunchy rice flour filled with soft-serve ice cream. 
Love by Kids, novel for tourists. If you find yourself in Korea during the summer heat wave, usually between July through September, then food-wise, you're in luck. The perfect time to enjoy some summer tradition, get a chance to join in the Sambok. A three-day celebration spread over the summer months. Our guide gives us some insight into the tradition and the cuisine that comes with it. What traditions do you have for summer here in Korea? We usually eat a doggy, doggy meat. Because most people were a hard worker, it's like a farmer, and they usually don't eat, you know, the cow, because this cow is kind of a tool for farming. They need a cow. That's why they, they eat the dog meat from the uh, uh, Silla dynasty. We have a celebrate the winter year or summer season called Sambok. Sam means, you know, three. Bok means it's a dog, so it's a three dog days. We designate the three dog days in summer season. First dog day is Chobok. Little dog day is Jumbok. The last dog day is my dog. In some book days, we usually eat dog meat. Charlie tells me further that the consumption of dog meat has generally been on the decline, as much of it catered to an older generation or adventurous foodies. And nowadays, dog meat is not popular for you know, the young generations. Even old people, it became our pet. We needed you know, the uh, alternatives to eat. That's why we you know, eat this sanggyetang. Sang means uh, ginseng. Ge means chicken. Tang is a soup, so we call it Ginseng chicken soup. We usually eat ginseng chicken soup in uh, three dog days. It's strange because it's a hot day and you're asking me to eat a very hot soup. If you feel hot now, you drink the cold water, you can satisfy this, you know, you can remove your hot temperature in your body instantly. After that, you feel hot again very soon. But if you drink the, or eat the hot food, you can the warmth of the food. Yes, for a long time. This is one of the wisdom from our ancestors. And so uh, there is a proverb in China and in Korea too. We call it the Yi Ji It means we can control, we can govern the heat with the heat. It is the most effective way to govern our hot body, okay? That's why we eat the hot ginseng chicken soup in three of days. Korean soups and stews are some of the most creative handsicks out there. Whether it's jampong, their spicy seafood, or the sundubu, the spicy tofu soup, these offer hearty meals to ward off the cold and warm the heart. But if you're more inclined to follow contemporary sensibilities toward keeping cool during the summer, then a bowl of ice-cold soup might do the trick. Nengmyeon, or cold noodle soup, was originally eaten during winter, but has recently become known as a summer dish. Its base is usually a silky sweet potato noodle served with cold bone broth and shaved ice. To top it off, they usually add some cucumber and hard-boiled egg plus some chili paste and mustard sauce on the side. It's a bit of an acquired taste if you like your soups hot and bold as its flavor is subtle but refreshing. Hankyung Shik is a full-course Korean meal, fit for a king, and rightly so, as its origins stem from the royal banquets of their dynastic era. Among the many fulfilling meals you can enjoy in South Korea, the Hankyung Shik is certainly the most lavish. The complex arrangement of dishes follow a strict guideline for harmony and balance, paying close attention to elements, color, and of course, taste. As food back then was also medicine, balance on the table ensured the health of the king. 
Together with Hankyung Shik, you may come across Dolsot Bao. Though not essential to a royal banquet, Dolsop bap is a special rice dish common in rice growing provinces like Ichon. Cooked in piping hot solid granite bowls, a rice crust forms at the bottom. And this is where the magic happens. After adding water over the crust and letting few forgotten minutes pass by, Dolsop bap turns into a kind of Korean porridge. But if there's one thing we can take away from the Korean dining experience that may not translate on the silver screen, is that their food culture is a generous one. Banchan or binchan seems to be the byword for the Korean dining experience. Benchen collectively refers to the legion of Korean side dishes that complement your meal. From soups to stews, vegetables to tofu concoctions, even occasional cuts of meat. What's best about them is the range of flavors that keep your palate refreshed. Generous and plenty with stacks of bowls and saucers dripping over themselves in Korean restaurants. Great service seems to be measured not by doting waitresses or expensive cutlery, but on how many side dishes they can serve you all at once. Invented and reinvented over the last thousand years, the banchan and the rest of Hansik ensures you never leave a restaurant with anything less than a full, satisfied stomach.